scene They taking God out to bring the devil in He all up in the schools, he all up in the church But they ain't trying to hear me That does the truth to hurt I'm a man, I'm gonna keep real They don't care about how you feel Jesus came for three things Tell me enjoy the story kill Yeah, he just a birthright Yeah, he just a birthright But you ain't trying to go to church So who you really serve, bro? But Jesus Show mercy, said that he will never hurt me. Said to him, I'll never die. He'll feed me, I'm never go thirsty. Back then, when the world hurt me, back then, when the world cursed me, Jesus came and picked me up. So I paid the blood's worthy. Show love, show grace. Five times I show faith, so I'm making through the great days. Run across, he took a place, he died for you, die for me, go for you, tell lies of me. I can't think of one friend like Jesus that will ride for me. I jump, and I bounce, and I yell, and I shout. But Jesus, that's who I'm talking about. Cause my hand, my mama, shout, 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 shout. Man, I jump, and I bounce, and I yell, and I shout. But Jesus, that's who I'm talking about. Cause my hand, my mama, shout, 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 yeah. Hallelujah, give the Lord some praise. Come on, give the Lord some praise. I know the Lord did this stuff for you. I mean, you, you alive, ain't it? You want to hear me help you? Say, I'm going to shout with me. Show me some love to shout with me. Shout, 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 He got a bed for me. He said he loves me. And that's for that. For that, I'm a shout, 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 shout. Let's go. Shout, 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 shout. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Ooh, I thank you, Lord. Thank you, Prosper. You know what I mean? Don't do that. Don't want to see you go to, you know, go beyond even what, what you think you want to do. You know, the pastor was talking. He said each and every one of us, like God, call us to. It's, it's basically serving God. You're not supposed to live an ordinary life. You know what I mean? We, you know, we don't serve an ordinary God. You know what I mean? He got big and just big things for us. And I can talk to him about Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I love His ministry. I love our bishop. I love my pastor. I love my bishop. I love my pastor. And thank you, Lord. Um, you know the beat. Oh yeah, yeah. Like y'all saying, like your mind. You know, the devil is a liar. Yeah, yeah. The devil is a liar. So we about to stop on the scene right now. Uh -huh. That's okay with y'all. Y'all gonna help me stop on the devil head? Yeah. Let's go. Y'all gonna help me stop on the devil head? Yeah. They said your life saw when you leave the church. If you can't find a job, then you need some work. Oh, you need a pet. Oh, you need a strap. Forget anybody else that you watch your back. They can teach me 50 ways how to make some stack. But how to really live right, they can't teach me that. So I picked up a Bible, read about the disciples. Learned how where you think I was, love was the idol. They were talking about Jesus, and I couldn't believe it. Like food in my soul, I just felt so complete. Then they mentioned the devil, and they say he a liar. How you got from the heavens and how he headed to fire? How he trying to trick me? How he want me to fail? But we just got on my side. I'm always prevailing. I'm like, never get a boss, man. 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 Got him on my body and I got him on my mind. That was time when your cat's on my grind. Okay, never get a boss, man. 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 Got him on my body and I got him on my mind. That was time when your cat's on my grind. Okay, they follow the hand. In the hood, chillin'. Used to watch movies and roots for the villains. Used to go to stack my bank rolls to the ceiling. So poison in the streets. Indeed, I made a killing. I used to be a 
off for it. I'm so around it. Let the light shine. Rain came and found me. Don't throw the chain drop off that is heavy. Holla came the sun of a king like a family. Let me to the ministry. All the grace he's given me. He even had a job of love. Since I keep the sin me. Put him on behind me. And he made me brand new. Said that for him there was nothing that I can't do. Turn me to a soldier. Even though the world is cold and colder. The boy get colder. Devil can't stop me. Even when he's trying to use people, places, things, and anything about me, that devil get a off me. 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 Got him on my body, and I got him on my mind. I was time to get back to my grandma. Okay, devil get a off me. 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 Got him on my body, and I got him on my mind. I was time to get back to my grandma. Okay. Uh, uh, this say devil get a both man. Devil get a both man. Devil get a both man. Hey Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say devil get a both man. Say devil get a both man. Got him on my body. And I got him on my mind. And I said, devil get a boss man. I said, devil get a boss man. I said, devil get a boss man. You know you want to say that for Show me some love. I like, I like my little homie right here, man. I like it, man. God bless y'all, man. Ain't nothing better than serving Jesus. Ain't nothing better than serving Jesus. Ain't nothing better than serving Jesus. Come on. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Give our love for praise. Thank you, Jesus. But all of you, Father God, and let everyone have an understanding of what I'm saying, Father God. And Lord, let it come out the way you want it to, Father God. Let it prick every heart, Lord God, that's open and willing to receive what you have, Father God. Lord God, I just thank you and I praise you in Jesus' name. I pray, Amen. Amen. Um, today I was going to talk about obedience and. Um, it's kind of like a little story I have to tell before I really start teaching the sermon or lesson. And um, so today I'm going to talk about the old word, bad word, obedience. And um, I think we feel like obedience is such a bad word because it's a part of us that we have to let go. When you are told to do something or asked to do something or have to do the word of God, it's a certain level of you, you have to say, I'm going to bow down, you know? And so often in this society, you know, we see in media, we see, you know, when you get on the bus or if you're looking at TV, it's all about me, it's all about me, it's all about me. Whoever the star is, it's all about them. You know, if it's singing, American Idol, you know, it's just that person, you know, it's all me, 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 me. What can I get? How can I benefit? You know, what am I getting out of the deal? You know, it's all about me. Even down to money is what I can get. You know, how much money can I get? How much can I buy for myself, you know? And that's what flesh wants. It wants to please itself, you know? And when you have to be obedient, you have to say, well, I'm going to do what the Word says, or I'm going to let go of me. I'm going to just bow myself down, you know? And the Word says we were born in sin and shaped in iniquity. So it's something that is... Something we know. That's what we were born in and shaped in, you know. That's what the world teaches us. We see it all the time. And um, this weekend, I was trying to go to a quiet fire with my car. So I had my car, you know, just sitting there because it was cool outside. And I was like, you're not driving that car with my insurance because if you slip on the ice, I'm not paying for it. So, <laughs> okay. So she was like, so you just ride to church with us and you get a ride back to the house. I'm like, okay. So I went to go crank my car up, it did not crank up. So I'm like, oh man, you know, golly, what is going on? So I was like, dad, my car won't crank up. Mom was like, hey, lost, my car won't crank up. So my dad was like, well, go get the, um, go get the, what are they called? Okay. Jumper cables, yeah. So go get the jumper cables, go get the jumper cables. My, let, my dad looks at the battery, he's like, that's why your car won't start up. Because you get all that, uh, what is it you call it? Oh, Corrosion around the battery. Yeah. He's like, Collins, I don't know how many times I'm going to have to tell you that you need to check this battery every two weeks. And you need to check that oil every two weeks. And I'm like, oh, man. So I go and get the 
baking soda and I get it, put it on there, clean it off. My dad was like, that's not clean enough. And mind you, it's at night, so it's cold. I'm standing in snow. I want to go inside. My dad mad because he got to come outside and do it for me. And it's just like, oh. And if I would have done what he told me to do in the beginning, I would have never had to go through being in the cold, being aggravated, being yelled at, everybody had to be outside, all of that. I wouldn't have had to go through it. Amen. So then, um, get up the next morning, the car won't start again. So my dad has to come outside. You know, he's like, you know, I, Lee, I'm starting to be like your mama because I try to support you, Lee, and I try to take off for you, and you don't listen, girl. You gonna learn one day. And I'm like, Lord, if I could just rewind, I wouldn't have checked this battery, you know? But the thing I had to realize was, if I would have wrote it down, you know, and made an alarm, I probably would have checked it, you know? But because I didn't take the time to say, okay, I'm going to do what you're asking me to do. You know, I know I wasn't going to remember after he said it. On, my dad was like, make sure you do this, make sure you do that. Yes, sir, okay, walk on my merry way. But I knew I should have written it down. You know, I should have taken the time, write it down, make sure that I do what I'm supposed to do in the future. And I wanted to um, bring about a scripture that it goes along with what I'm trying to say. And it's here in James 4, 17. So y'all can go to James 4, 17. Good, good, good. Amen. Put a word, Lord. Thank, Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the word, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the word. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Everybody? Pretty much? Mm -hmm. All right. So um, I'm going to paraphrase. It says, to know to do good and do it not is sin. You know, and most of the time we think, well, if I go outside and do some drugs, that's a sin. If I get a tattoo, that's a sin. Um, if I commit homosexuality or, or um, go out and cheat on my wife, that's a sin. You know, but here it says to know to do good and do it not is a sin. So if I knew I should have wrote and written what my dad told me to do down and I didn't do it, that was a sin to begin with. Amen. Now... Maybe it would take me two weeks for the sin to count because he said, you know, do this every two weeks. But it was still a sin because I knew to do what he told me to do and I didn't do it. You know, it's not just about, you know, I go out here and I commit a crime or I hurt somebody's feelings. Whenever you're in a situation where you have to do what's good and you don't do it, it's a sin. Basically, that's what the scripture is saying. That covers all bases. So if you know you're supposed to be doing something for God and you're not doing it for him, that's a sin. If you're not serving God the way you're supposed to be serving Him, if you're not paying your tithes, if you're not coming to church faithfully, if you're not um, involved in your ministry, if you're not doing what your bishop and pastor asked you to do, you're basically sinning. Amen. Amen. That's just the book one of it. That's okay. Good. That's good. Now, I want to go to Psalms 119 and 30. Right, Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. But if you know you're supposed to do something and it's good and you don't do it, you're sinning. Amen. Oh, um, Psalms 119 and 30. Thank you, Lord. 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 So, basically, David was saying he's chosen the right way, the clear way. What's, what's the truth? The word. The word is truth, you know. And he's laid it before him like a judgment. Like, if I don't do what this word is telling me to do, then basically I'm not doing what's right. That's how we're supposed to live. Whatever the word is saying or saying to do that we have to do, you need to lay it before you. You need to know what's in it for you to lay it before you first. But once you know what the word says, then you need to do it. You know, you can't just say, well, you know, um, I'll, I'll do it when I get a chance. Or, you know, if it's supposed to be done, if the situation comes up and that's what the word says to do, then you're supposed to do it. You can't say, 
you know, I'm going to walk in denial or I'm going to make up an excuse why I should do this. And the word says that's do right. that, then that's what you should do. Amen. And oftentimes we play games with ourselves. We don't really want to consider the truth. We want to allow ourselves to just go about merrily and believe what we believe is true, you know? And that's one thing I learned at the Quiet of Fire. It said what we do is what we believe, and what we believe is truth for us. You know, what you thinking in your head, and like Kevin Hart said, he said when he started lying, he started believing his lies. Yeah. Most people do do that. They start coming up with a lie. I'm like, yeah, that's good. And I did do because I did this, so that means I did do it. But that's not really the truth. And oftentimes we often live a lie because we don't want to admit to the truth. The truth hurts, you know. Yeah. You really have to go and face the truth and look at yourself in the mirror. You'll be like, Dad, I shouldn't have did that or I shouldn't have thought that. And it might not be that bad to somebody else, but you know what's right, you know. You know what the Word says. You know what's true for yourself. And we can't just walk blindly and say, you know, well, it's not that bad or... What Pastor Bishop didn't see it, so it doesn't really count. Or I, her feelings weren't that hurt. Or she didn't cry when I said it, so she must not feel that bad. Or I don't have to apologize. I just go repent to the Lord and he'll forgive me for what I did. You know? But we really have to own up to the situation, whatever it may be. I had to own up to, you should have done this two weeks ago. And if you would have done it two weeks ago, you wouldn't be going through what you're going through right now. Oftentimes, we don't like to admit that. We want to say, I'm right and you're wrong. And that, as a young adult, as a teenager, you're always right. No matter what goes on, I'm right and you're wrong. There's nothing you can do about it. But oftentimes, we're the ones standing in the wrong, not doing what we're supposed to do, and blaming somebody else for the reason why we didn't do what we were supposed to do, you know? And adults do it too. They don't admit it all the time. But they do. Everybody does it because we have so much pride, we don't want to admit that I'm wrong. That's how it goes, you know? It's not good, but that's how it goes. And we have to just, you know, be truthful with yourself. And it's hard, you know, getting in there with God and saying, God, I really need you to help me get, you know, get rid of this pride or getting rid of having the fear of people seeing who I really am. It doesn't matter what they say. When you know what you need to do to get yourself together, that's all that matters. Anybody can say what they want to say. They can do what they want to do. They can talk about you. They can put it on Facebook. They can tweet about it. You're popular, evidently, if they're doing all of that. That's but right, right, you're getting exactly yourself right. together. You can't worry about what somebody might be saying about you or what they may be trying to do to you. If you get yourself lined up, that's all that matters to God. Amen. And in order to do that, you have to build that relationship with Him and trust Him enough to say, God, I believe that you'll help me, and I'm relying on you. I'm going to give it to you. You know, uh -huh. you can't hold on or say, well, I'm going to let you do this, but I'm not. Because then you're not really being fully obedient. You know, you're not really saying, Lord, God, I believe you, you're going to be, you're going to do what you say you're going to do in your word, you know, and that all connects, you know, you have to believe what's in the word in order to allow yourself to do it, you know, if you don't really believe it or you're in denial or you don't want to face the truth, then it's not going to really work for you because you don't really believe what you're reading, you know, and um, another scripture I wanted to go to is Exodus 23 and 22. So chapter 23, verse 22. Thank you, Lord, Lord. Thank you for your word, Father. It is precious. It is precious. Exodus 23, verse 22. Okay. It says, But if you carefully obey his voice and do all that I say, then I will be an enemy to your enemies, and an adversary to your adversaries. So in order for us to go to the place, you know, where God is blessing us abundantly and looking to have our back and he's there rooting for us on the sideline. I mean, of course he's doing that anyway because he sent his son to die. But in order for you to be a team with him, for him to be an enemy to your enemies and help you when you need to be helped, you have to do what his voice tells you to do. Basically obeying what his word says, what this should pass to give us, doing what they tell us to do. In order for him to have your back, you got to be doing what he's telling you to do, basically. Amen. You know, and oftentimes we don't want to do what God says because we feel like we know what's going on. And, you know, I say that every time because we do feel like we know what's going on because we're dealing with the pride thing, you know. Amen. You have to let it go and say, I really don't know what's going on. And 
God, I believe you're going to do what you need to do. And I'm going to obey you. I'm really going to obey you. And oftentimes it's hard because things come up. You know, we have time caps. You got to have this done and that done. And you might be tired and you might, yeah, you might be tired. But you can rest when you die. You need to get God's work done and do what he's doing, telling you to do diligently, like running after it. And, you know, you shouldn't have time to just be, well, she get on my nerves and I'm getting so tired of this and this, that, and the other. When you have enough time to talk about people and do all of this crazy stuff and not really seek God, you're not doing what you're supposed to do. Because you should be like diligently seeking God. You know, your education should be around God. Your job should be around God. Like everything you do, going to church is about God, not to see who's doing this or see who's doing that. You know, it's not about you. You know, get that out of your head and just like line your thing up with God and you know do what you have to do for him but oftentimes we center ourselves around ourselves so when we have a hard time doing what God has us to do we're like oh dang I did want to go to church but I had planned to do this and I did want to do that for the food ministry but I had already planned to do that if you ask God what he needs you to do you will have your time and schedule all lined up so that you can get what you need to get done and what God needs you to get done. Right. But you yeah, line you your know. schedule up doing what you want to do, on, then you're going to have a hard time trying to do what God That's tells right. you to do. That's right. That's right. That's right. Amen. Thank you, so we're going to go to John 14 and 15. Thank you for your word, Lord. Thank you, 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 Lord. All right. And it basically says, if you love me, you keep my commandments. Okay? So we have to do what God has commanded us to do. And I just talking about, it didn't say you will keep my Ten Commandments. It said you will keep my commandments. Whatever God's commanding you to do, if you love him enough, you will do whatever it is he's asking you to do. You know, you will obey him. You will do what you can for him because you love him so much. And if you don't build a relationship yes. with him, you won't love him like you're supposed right. to. Then you don't really know him. Nobody really loves people they don't know. Uh, Even if you have a star yeah. that you like, like you know their stats, you know about them, you know when, when their birthday is, and you know what concerts they have. You know something about them, and that's why you like them so much. Uh, but we don't know about God. We don't know his stats. We don't know nothing about what he's doing. Uh, you know, well, um, God blessed me today because this, that, and the other. And so if, if you get a blessing and you don't have a relationship with God, you might not even realize that you got blessed. Because you're not tuned in with him, you know. God might be doing stuff for you and you don't even realize it because you're not lined up. You don't talk to him. You don't read about his word. You don't really obey him. But if you do, you're doing it because it, it benefits you, you know. It's not just to benefit me. It's not about me. It's about you. And I love you so much that I'm going to do what you're asking me to do, you know. And that's basically what we need to be doing in our lives. Obeying God, like, just... Putting aside what we want to do, listen to his voice, you know, yeah. carefully. God, what is it that you really want me to do, you know? Can anybody in here raise their hand and say God has something for them to do in, in life? You know that. Everybody knows that God has something for them to do in life. Now, if you already know that, you don't know what he wants you to do, you need to build that relationship with him and say, God, what is it that you want me to do? Yeah. You know, not just listening to us talk to you over and over and over again. Or if you say, well, you need to get involved in the church. And Bishop and Pastor saying that every time they come up here to preach, but you never get involved in the church. Why? Uh, you know, that's just plain being disobedient. If you know that's something you're supposed to be doing according to God's word. And I'm not talking about something that man that just made up out. No, you're talking about that. I'm talking about what the word says. And in order for you to get where you want to go, to be blessed, to be having the favor of the Lord, yes. to be walking in oneness with God, That's all it. of that, you're going to have to be obedient and do what it's he's telling you to do. I mean, that's just it. I mean, if you're in a situation where you, you don't know what obedience, you know, how to determine what I need to do, then maybe you need to go get some counseling or something. Mm -hmm. But in everyday life, Basically, we know what's right and what's wrong. Amen. So, obey what he's telling you to do. Listen to his voice. And he'll be an enemy to your enemies. That's he'll right. root you on. Right. He'll have your back. Because you're lining your life up.
for him. Yeah, you won't get any joy out of life for real. Just like, oh, I love life. You know, not a billionaire, I'm a billionaire and I got all this money now, I'm happy. No, just fulfilled and happy with your life until yes. you really that's get it lined up with him. Yes. Yes. It won't happen. Uh -huh. So that's my sermon for today. Yeah, that's all I have to say.